So um, I guess uh, maybe the pl good place to start looking through the neighborhood of the sun is just to pick out some stars. I have a good list from Sun Module 4.2 and uh, I'll just uh, work through that list. <laughs> so these are uh, 10-ish uh, brightest stars in our sky. So I think this is a good place to start. Um, let me just bring this out of full screen and let me just to reset my view here. Um, uh, so let's look for just each of these stars one by one. Um, so I guess, uh, should I explain all these uh, features? Um, I guess uh, some of the numbers are uh, self-explanatory, you know, distance in light years. So the closest uh, of the bright stars is the uh, Regil Centaurus or uh, Alpha Centauri. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a light... Uh, distance of 4.4 light years away. It's not the brightest star, it's uh, third the brightest star other than the sun. Um, and, and some stars are quite far. Uh, Rigel and uh, Betelgeuse are pretty far. It, they, um, so distance is, I think, self-explanatory. Um, visual magnitude, that's an indicator of how bright something is, smaller, the number is the more bright it is. Um, so Sirius is the most bright and uh, Altair is the least bright of the group, although it's still like a magnitude of one star. Um, spectral class is something that we cover later in the, this slide. So I'll just to show you what that is um, later on <laughs> during temperature spectral class. Uh, we sh show the spectral class and what they represent. Uh, they come with the letter followed by number and uh, what that represents so they were established by looking at the spectrum of the star and it turns out there's a, a strong relationship between the temperature of the star or the spectrum of the star which is the thing directly observed and uh, and the temperature of the star and the reason they don't go in a um, sensible alphabetical order like a b c d e and so on is they were originally named um, by the strength of the hydrogen lines. I think these are the hydrogen lines. So A was the one with the strongest hydrogen line. It turns out when people understood the formation of these uh, spectral lines better, the uh, strongest hydrogen line didn't necessarily mean the uh, hottest star. And, uh, and so someone figured it out and put, put it in the right order. I think, uh, um, I have reference to who did that. It's it's covered in the textbook. Um, I think I forget her name. Um, Annie something. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not good with the names of uh, scientists who don't have like a law named after them. Um, but um, uh, your textbook has a profile on her, uh, like a classifier of stars, and uh, she's the one who I think in, in the end devised this scheme. Um, anyways, so. Uh, Long story short, it comes with a letter plus number, and it's an indicator of the temperature of the star. Uh, our sun is a G class star. Um, so anything that uh, letters F, A, B, or O are stars that are hotter than our sun. Anything letters with a K or M are stars that are cooler than our sun. Um, so, so that spectral class information there, um, you um, kind of have to refer to that to um, no, so sun is G2. And uh, so let's start out with a Sirius. That's A, so that must be hotter than our sun. So uh, let me just find the Sirius. Okay, uh, let me center on Sirius. Yep, with brightish of the stars there. And, uh, and let's go take a look. And you will note that the stars in the background are not moving much. And that is quite physically accurate because Sirius is only 10 light years away. It's uh, one of the closest the stars. So it uh, makes a sense that the background doesn't move so much. So it looks like it's a, it's a binary star. Uh, I think I mentioned this before. Binary stars are quite common, maybe quite, possibly even more common than 
I, I think astronomers do believe it's actually more common than uh, a system like ours with uh, only one sun. So right now what has selected is the very center or center of mass between these two uh, binary stars in the system. Let's take a look at the bigger one. Um, so it's the A1 V, it's hotter than our sun. Let's see, does it? Yeah, it leads to luminosity. It's in unit of our sun's luminosity. Our sun has luminosity of one. So this is a star that's 20 times as bright as, it puts out 20 times as much light as our own sun. So let's go to that primary and take a look to see, um, you know, if uh, see if we recognize the similar features, uh, maybe some features are different. Also, I actually haven't tried the series before this meeting. I tried Alpha Centauri. Um, so, okay, so that's what it looks. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the rotation rate that, uh, uh, let me just, Okay, I, at the same time scale, um, the rotation rate did seem faster than our sun, I don't know, uh, but you know, that would be the kind of made up part. The orbital period is not, that's uh, actually measured. Okay, so this is where you do have to be careful that this is a game. Um, <laughs> or it, it's a simulation that fills in the, um, uh, fills in some of the gaps with uh, made up information and something like a rotation period of a star, um, it's not something that we can determine with this level of accuracy. Uh, there are things that you can watch out for in the stellar spectrum to figure out is this a star spinning, but not with that level of precision. So I'm pretty sure that part is made up. Uh, orbital period, I don't think that would be made up. That would be real. And let me just double check and make sure that in my filter, I only have a real turned on. I'm not dealing with any procedural stars. <laughs> uh, procedural means they were generated uh, by the software. So, so okay, that's what this uh, star looks like. And I think if I zoom in, I will see features are similar to what we saw in the sun. So, you know, sunspots, uh, we think if it, operates under the same mechanics of physics as um, as our sun does, then we think it would have a sunspot, similar magnetic field. And when you zoom in far enough, it shows a similar, many similar features, uh, same granulation pattern. And this is a kind of the indicator of the judgment of the people who are working with the stellar models that um, that this star, uh, which is quite similar to our sun, it's uh, only at twice the mass of our sun, that a lot of the dynamics are here would be similar to the sun. So, so the features are similar and um, it, it's brighter, but other than that, there aren't really qualitative differences here. So, um, so let's look at some other stars, but before we go on to look at other stars. Uh, I just want to make sure to highlight some things um, to put things in perspective. So right now we are in the orbit of Sirius. Let me just uh, zoom out a little bit. So uh, wait, actually let me zoom out enough that I have a view of the system. Okay, very center selected. Okay. So this is where we are with the view of Sirius. You can kind of imagine we are on a spacecraft orbiting Sirius. And let's see what the sun looks like from here. So let me center on the sun. That's what sun looks like. It, uh, it would, it's definitely visible. <laughs> um, it, uh, it's uh, only 10 light years away, so you would see it. But in this sky of many bright stars, sun would not necessarily be the brightest stars. Um, if uh, I didn't have a software thing that was ready to point it out, like I wouldn't, I might not see that that's a noticeably different uh, point of light. That's just the way things are. <laughs> sun is not a special star. At least we don't believe it is a special star. And uh, let me show one more thing, which is the constellations. So um, as you move about within Milky Way galaxy, constants, constellations will 
distort. Um, so we haven't moved very far. We only moved 10 light years away. Even so, some of the very recognizable constellations will now look different. Let's see here. I'm looking for the Big Dipper because that's the one that I have some chance of seeing that that looks weird. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so Canis Major will all be messed up because <laughs> that's where um, Sirius is and we're right there. Uh, let's see here. And okay, so Orion is also a little bit messed up because uh, that's uh, supposed to be Orion's belt and those uh, three stars don't appear to be in a line anymore. Um, where's my Big Dipper? Um, oh, Cassiopeia. Oh, wow, Cassiopeia doesn't look like a W at all. Um, Ah, Ursa Minor. So that's the Polaris. And let's look for the Big Dipper. That should be, yeah. So somewhere around here are the seven stars that made up, made up the Big Dipper. But the, <laughs> the, the, the pattern just isn't there anymore. Um, it, um, or maybe it was a, Maybe it's these seven stars. I can't tell which one. But what I can tell you for sure is that um, they are not in the same pattern. It's, uh, you know, the way the stars appear in a constellation, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, that is, so it's these seven stars. That's a part of Big Dipper. And um, these two stars no longer point to Polaris. And that's just going to be the pattern. Um, let's go look at, uh, I got a, Pick and choose what stars to look at. Uh, let's look at just one more um, sun-like star, Alpha Centauri, that's, uh, um, that's quite similar to our own sun. So I think uh, we should pay the visit. Let me just find Alpha Centauri here. Um, Regal Cantarus. Um, Alpha Centauri. From the center. Okay. Uh, let me do it this way. Um, I have a star browser and great, that's not it. Yeah, star browser. So stars within 10 light years. Let's see here. Oh, let me turn off the filter. Um, yeah, so we are at Sirius. Um, oh yeah, and uh, RS is a, a acronym that they use for procedurally generated systems. So I'll be ignoring those. They are not real. Um, the sun is there. Um, is Alpha Centauri, ah, there it is. Um, yeah, let's go to Alpha Centauri. Uh, Let's see, yeah. So that's also <laughs> another unremarkable star as a sim from Sirius. So, almost there. It's a binary star. And I, I thought it was like a double binary. Um, oh, you know what? I think uh, um, if you look for the Proxima Centauri, then, uh, or, you know, Proxima, that uh, um, I think it's uh, gravitationally bound to Alpha Centauri. So if you center there, then yeah, that's uh, pretty close to here only. 0.23 light years. I mean, I guess it's closer than um, how close any other star is to our own sun. But um, So that's Alpha Centauri or the primary of Alpha Centauri or, is it, well, that's the one that got named A. So let's look at that. I think the two are quite similar to each other. Um, yeah, so their center of mass is somewhere in between them. Um, so. Um, so when we look at it, I, I think if I just uh, showed you this uh, 
few and told you that it's our son, <laughs> you might believe in it. And frankly, you should believe it because the underlying simulation for this and our son is quite similar. It's uh, about the same mass as our son, about the same brightness as our son. So there, the simulation doesn't really treat this all that much differently from our own son. So, so, okay, so those are um, stars that are like our sun. Let's uh, go find some stars that are unlike our sun. Um, so, I think, let's see here. Um, I'm looking at the spectral class to see. So, there's no spectral class O star. Okay, so it's not gonna be in this list because I guess it's not in the list of uh, bright stars from us. Um, so let me just uh, search for a spectral O class star, uh, hopefully somewhere nearby. Uh, so gonna search for filter setting. Systems main star is. Um, main sequence, spectral class O. Um, and let me just to make sure it only returns real stars. Object parameters. Um, maybe that's fine. Uh, uh, object to search, real stars only. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so within 10 light years, no class O stars or spectral class O stars. Within 100 light years, no, okay. Um, yeah, I guess if uh, we had one within, okay, let's say within 1,000 light years. All right. Um, yeah, so these are from Hipparchus catalog. Uh, they are quite... Um, so th their apparent magnitudes are quite dim. You would never see, or maybe except for this one. Uh, so this one, you would be able to see it with the naked eyes, I think, from Earth. So let's go to that one, since uh, um, that's a star that someone who's uh, stargazing without any advanced equipment might have been able to see. So again, from this great distance of uh, 400 light years away, 500 light years away, it's unremarkable dot of light. Let's uh, go there. And this time you should see the background starts moving quite a bit because um, 400 light years, it's a uh, not significant portion of the galaxy, but uh, we are moving past a few stars. So, uh, and uh, from this location, oh, <laughs> let me just zoom out a little bit here. Um, from the and just as a warning, this could be a binary star, um, but the sy simulation has decided that it's going to be a single star. So this is where again you do have to be careful um, which portion of this view is artist rendering and what is back to with the physical uh, data. So I just want to make sure that I show you the constellation, just to how. Uh, messed up everything is. <laughs> um, so at this point, the constellations basically mean nothing. Uh, 500 light years away, the shapes that we had recognized from Earth are all distorted out of uh, recognition. So, um, so constellation means nothing here. <laughs> okay, so with that, let's uh, look at the star. Uh, so I want to, okay, I'm going over time. I just want to show this star um, a blue giant or um, a star that's a main sequence star like our sun, but much hotter and maybe a red giant star. So um, the simulation is simulating. Oh, you know what? I think it, some of the features they simulate are quite different. Mm. So I didn't think there would be granulation patterns on a star that's uh, this large. Um, mainly because I thought um, 
the layers are supposed to work a little bit differently on a much harder star. Um, they are supposed to have convective inner layer and radiative outer layer. But you know what? I not enough of an astrophysicist to, to know that for sure. So let me just move on to the red giant star because then I checked it before this meeting and I know that they look different. <laughs> so Betelgeuse uh, Betel Goose is one of the red giant stars that's also in that list of the bright stars I seen from Earth. So we'll go there <laughs> instead. Um, I probably should have checked a class or main sequence of star before I uh, did anything. So let me go there. Um, that's again, quite some distance away from Earth. The Betelgeuse is one of the brighter stars and it's uh, so bright uh, from Earth because it is so luminous. It's uh, 9,000 times more luminous than the sun. This is um, one of the end stage of stars. So it started out as a much heavier star than our sun, 20 times the sun's mass. And, uh, but its surface temperature is lower because it's uh, burned its uh, nuclear fusion fuel and it's going through its end stages. It's uh, in its uh, red giant stage. And, um, and that's what the simulation is uh, showing here. It's showing these surface features quite differently from how it was showing the main sequence of stars because um, different things are going on in these outer layers than main sequence of stars. In a main sequence star, the material is in uh, hydrostatic equilibrium. Uh, the inward pull of gravity is carefully balanced by outward pressure um, provided by both the gas pressure of the hot gas and also for heavier stars than our sun, the radiation pressure. In the red giant stages where um, for a brief time, uh, there's more fusion going on in the inner outer layers. And as that, uh, that additional fusion is uh, causing the outer layers to expand, as they expand, they cool. And that's what this simulation is trying to show. It's showing irregular shapes. I don't know how it would really be, but, but it's, it would definitely look different from a main sequence of stars. 